Welcome to Educate. Well, we have got a circuit here which says that in the circuit below, the battery has an EMF of 12 volts. The resistance of the wires and battery may be ignored. The switch S is now closed and the reading on the voltmeter 2 is 3 volts. Welcome to Educate. Today we're going to be doing a practice on electric circuits in grade 11. So here we are told that in the statements that the reading on V2 is equal to 3 volts. So it means that we know what is our parallel voltage. So here, first of all, as you can see, that voltmeter number 2 is measuring the voltage amongst all of these resistors. Therefore, that is why we call it parallel voltage or the potential difference across the parallel resistors, which is R, 6 ohms, and 4 ohms. So first of all, before we start answering the questions, we have to do an analysis on the circuit to exactly label what do we have in the circuit, what do we need to get first. Okay, so first of all, we can see that we have got uh, an emitter here. So remember that an emitter always measures current. If you didn't understand that video, we recommend you to check it out again. Link is in the description. So A always measures current. But then in this case, we have to determine what type of current is measured by emitter number A. Well, if you can see that emitter number A is just positioned near the battery or the cells, so it means it's measuring the total current. So we have already labeled what A is measuring. So A is measuring the total current. Right. And then we are given 12 volts here on the cells. So that 12 volts, what is it measuring? Remember that voltage is the energy given to the charges so that they can move around. So first of all here, this energy is provided by the battery. That is why this is called an EMF or this is the total voltage of the circuit. So we have got a switch S there, it is closed. So the fact that a switch is closed, it means that there is current flowing through the whole entire circuit. And then we are given V1 over there. Voltmeter number one is measuring voltage across the six ohms resistor indeed, but then we do not know its magnitude or its size. So now let us now go and analyze which part is parallel, which part is series. Okay, so if you can check all this part, it is the series part of the circuit here all of this is the series part and then if you can check out the parallel part of the circuit it is this part because that is where we find the parallel setup or the parallel combination all right so as you can see here we've got uh blue and red so red is our parallel combination blue is our series combination so in the series combination let us check out how many resistors have we got we have got only one resistor so it means that our series resistance is equals to the resistor in the series connection and it's only one it's equals to six ohms so we now know what our series resistor is resistance is so now i'm sure we can go to the question questions since we now know exactly what each and everything is measuring over there. So the first question says define the term electric current. Okay, so electric current just talks about the rate of flow of charge. So the rate of flow of charge just talks about how fast or how slow does the charge move around the circuit. That defines current. So let us go to question two. It says calculate the reading on the emitter. Let us go back and see our labels. Where is the emitter? The emitter is measuring the total current as, or, as we have already analyzed. So it means that we're actually calculating the total current of the circuit. So how do we calculate the total current over here? First of all, let's see what is associated with A. So A is in series with this 6 ohms resistor. And we also have got the series resistance over there. So it means we can actually find the, um, the voltage of V1. Remember that V1 is measuring the 6 ohms resistor. So here the total voltage is 12 volts, meaning that uh, the sum of all voltages in the circuit will add up to 12 volts. But then we are given one of the voltages to be 3 volts on voltmeter number 2, meaning that we have to check out what is the total voltage made of. So the total voltage may is here is made of V1 and V2, of which we have got the total voltage. We do not have V1 plus we do, but we do have V2 to be three volts. So it means V1 is equals to nine volts. Remember that in a series combination, voltage is divided. So here, this is nine volts. So here we've got the magnitude of the voltage of the six ohms resistor. Therefore, here, 
this is for the 6 ohms resistor, and then this is the resistance of the 6 ohms resistor. Therefore, we can apply the ohms law here, stating that R is equals to V over I, whereby R is the resistance, V is the voltage, and I is the current. So what is R? R is the magnitude of the resistance, is equals to 6 ohms. What is V? V is the potential difference across the 6 ohms resistor. Well, the potential difference across the 6 ohms resistor is 9 volts. We have already calculated it. So here, it is 9 volts over I. So here now, we calculate the current. So here, this would be the same as 6I is equals to 9. Here, we have to eliminate 6 and eliminate 6. Therefore, I here will be equals to we can divide here by 3 and divide here by 3 also. So it means that here we will remain with 3 over 2. So that is the current 1.5 amperes. So it means that the reading on the emitter is the current or the total current in this case. So here the total current is equal to 1.5 amperes. That's 4 marks. So now let us go to the second question. The second question uh, asks us to calculate the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, so you must always remember the formula for the totals that states that the total voltage is equals to the total current multiplied by the total resistance. Okay, let's see if we have these elements of this formula. Have we got the total voltage? Yes, we do have it. We have already labeled it to be 12 volts because it is the voltage measured across the battery. Therefore, we've got 12 volts here. And then for our current, do we have the total current? Indeed, we have calculated it in the previous question. So the total current is 1,5 amperes. And then the total resistance is what we are looking for. So here we have to eliminate here 1,5 as well as 1,5 over there. Therefore, your total resistance here will be equals to 8 ohms. So this is the total resistance of the circuit. That's 2 marks. Okay, so let's go to question number 4. Now they want us to calculate an unknown resistor, which is resistor number R. So if you can say, remember that we have labeled that R is involved in the parallel part of the circuit. So it means R is within this parallel. So everything we're going to do will involve the parallel part. So here we always use the Ohm's law. So let's see what can we use. We can use the parallel resistance. Have we got the parallel resistance? No, we do not have it. Remember that the parallel resistance is actually a combination of 4 ohms, 6 ohms, and R. Of which you don't know R, therefore we have to calculate the parallel resistance first. Well, remember that we analyzed that the series resistance is equal to 6 ohms because there's only one resistor in the series combination. Therefore, we also have the total resistance calculated in the previous question. Therefore, we can use the formula that states that the total resistance is equal to the sum of the series resistance plus the parallel resistance. Do we have the total resistance? Yes, of course we do. It's equals to 8. And then do we have the series resistance? Yes, it is equals to 6. But then we do not have the parallel resistance. So here, we will transpose our 6 and then we we'll remain with parallel resistance is equals to 2 ohms. So it means that we now know exactly what is the magnitude of all these parallel resistors together. Now we want to calculate the resistance of resistor R. So we go with the formula for calculating a resistance in parallel. It states that 1 over the parallel resistance is equal to 1 over the first resistor plus the second resistor plus the third resistor. Well, we do have the magnitudes or the sizes of those resistors. Well, RP is equal to 2 ohms, therefore we substitute. And then R1, let's look at which one is our first resistor. We're having 4 ohms over here, we substitute 4. And then we are having R2. R2 is given by uh, 6 ohms over here, and then we substitute its resistance, but we do not have the resistance of R3. So here, the whole idea is to actually transpose and remain with 1 over R3 on one side so that we can be able to calculate R3 as positive. So here, what will we do? We'll actually transpose 1 over 4 to that side as well as 1 over 6. So that will be 1 half minus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6. 
Well, to calculate that, it's 1 over 2 minus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6. Remember that when something is transposed, it becomes, uh, its sign changes from negative to positive. If it's negative, it changes to positive. So here is equals to 1 over R3. So here now we, it's a matter of solving for R3. So here, if we calculate all of this, we'll get uh, 1 over 12 is equals to 1 over R3. Well, this is not our final answer since we're looking for the resistance of R3. Remember, R3 is our uh, R resistor, which we do not know. So here we do cross multiplication since we've got an equal sign. Therefore, we'll have 12 multiplied by 1 is equals to R3 times 1. Therefore, our third resistor over there is the same as a resistor R is equals to 12 ohms. Don't forget to subscribe, stay tuned, tell your friends to stay tuned. Thank you for watching.